Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the features involved in composing emails in Gmail. So within Gmail, you've got the Compose button that's on the top left hand side. So if we click on this, we can compose our email. When I do open an email, I also have the option to full screen it. So I can click on this and I get a larger window to compose my email. So when we're writing an email, one of the first things we need to think about is who we're sending it to. So this is the field where we can put in the email address of who we're sending to. If we're within a domain, it can often bring up the names of those in our domain already, so suggestions or those in our contacts. Our other options when we are sending though is to have CC or BCC. So if I click on here, we can see the CC field. This means carbon copy. And that means we can include people in here who we want to view the email, but we aren't expecting them to action anything from the email. So it's really just for their reference. Under this, we have BCC, and that stands for blind carbon copy. This means that the email addresses in this field won't be seen by the other people in the email. So BCC is really important to keep confidentiality of other email users, particularly if you're sending large group emails. We've obviously got the area next for our subject, so we can put our subject of our email in there. One of the features Gmail doesn't have is that you can't label your email as important. So I would suggest if you do want your recipients to view this as important, you can just put this in right here at the beginning of your subject. Next, we have the body of our email, and this is where we're going to put our information. If you notice, if I just start typing, it will actually come up with what's called Smart Compose. So you can see here, it's already picked up the name of the person I'm replying to. If I click the Tab key, it moves to the end of that sentence. So if I continue typing, you can see there again. So Smart Composable is Google AI that will learn what you're trying to write and so help you in your sentences. Obviously, if you don't want to use this, you can turn it off in the settings. You'll notice down the bottom of your email, you've got some options here. The first of these is the formatting options, and this brings up this toolbar here. So if I turn it off, you won't see the toolbar, but if I turn it on, the toolbar appears. So you've got basic options such as undo and redo, and then I've got some font options. So I could select my text, I can choose a different font, I can choose a font size, bold, italics, underline, I can choose the text color or the background color. So make sure if you're using this, which one you want to use. So I can do the text color. So at the moment we've got text, but also if I wanted to, I can do a background for that. Next, we've got the justification and the alignment. So I can center align my email. So I'm just gonna move that back to left align. And we've got numbered bullets. We've got ordinary bullets. And then we could indent as well. So we've got some different options here. There's also a quote option, so if you want to add something in from somebody else. And again, it's just making it stand out in a different way. Strike through, so we can cross that off. And then this last button removes all the formatting. So we can use all of these tools here to format the look of our text in our email. There are a couple of other options I'll just show you here. You've got an emoji option, so if I click Insert Emoji, it brings up all the different emojis here, and so I can choose some of these. And the ones you use regularly will come up here under the magnifying glass. As well as emojis, you can also insert images. When inserting images, you have two options. You can do them as inline or as attachment. So inline means that they appear in the body of the email. So if I click on this and click inline, you'll see it embeds this image into the email itself rather than as an attachment. Another option in the toolbar is the link option. So if I had some text and I want to create it into a hyperlink linking to a document or a website, for example, I can click insert link and I can put the website address here and then click OK. And that then turns that into a hyperlink for your recipient. And the last thing we're going to think about in terms of the body of our email, let's minimize that, is our signature. So I can insert a signature. And this is where, if in settings you've set up multiple signatures, you can choose which signature you want to include in the email. So next we're going to think about attachments. There's two ways of doing attachments. You've got a paperclip icon here. If I click on this, it then brings up my file explorer window. And so I can click 
on a file, any type of file, and click open. The other way of attaching files is through Google Drive. So if I click on the drive icon, I can then click on a file and insert that. So we can see that has appeared here where I have my cursor. Obviously, if I don't want it anymore, I can click the X to remove this, and the same here as well. If I do send an email that has an attachment from Google Drive, it will pick up whether that attachment has been shared with the recipient and will ask me at that point if I want to share it. I'm just going to remove everything from my email, just quickly, just to clear all this. A few other features we have confidentiality mode. This adds an extra layer of security to your email that asks for an SMS code to be sent to the recipient with a code before they can see the email. We do have a separate video on that, so I encourage you to check that out on the YouTube channel. Over on the right hand side, you've got more options. So if you've got things like templates set up, labels, printing, spell check, you also will see here a bin icon. And this is important because if I actually at the moment just click the X icon here, as you can see here, it saves and closes it. So it saved this as a draft. If you don't want this anymore, then do click the bin icon. Otherwise, you'll find you're going to have a lot of drafts in your mailbox. And the last thing I'm going to show you is just on this send button. Obviously, if you're ready to send, you can click send. But this down arrow, if you click on this, it will also enable you to schedule the send. And I can choose one of these preset times or select my own date and time that I want the email to go. When I do click send, you'll see the undo option here. So if I don't want to send it straight away, I can click undo. It is timed. So my time ran out there. And so that has now sent. So I hope this video helps you to get the most out of composing and sending your emails.